name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Pastor Larry Lee of the Church on the Rock in Rockwall, Texas is on the cutting edge of leading God's people into miracles through the power of prayer. The vision is to raise up 300,000 prayer warriors who will march into battle every day, pull down the enemy's strongholds, and claim the promise of God to turn his judgments away from America and heal our land. Could you not tarry one hour? Join Larry Lee and this mighty praying army, expecting the power of God to change your life and the life of our nation. I'm really thrilled that you join me on this Saturday night because tonight God has given me a special anointing for something to be broken in your life. The Lord spoke to my heart and he said, I want you to go on this Saturday night program and break depression off of my people. And I'm believing tonight what's written in Isaiah 61 where it says that the anointing of the Lord is upon his ministry in order to console all those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, in order that they can be called the trees of righteousness. Now listen to me right now. If you ever stayed through a program and expected a miracle, do it tonight, because I'm certain that what's about to happen is going to change your life. I'm going to preach a message, don't lose your joy. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to break that spirit of depression. I'm going to bind it and it's going to leave you and you're going to receive a fresh infusion of the power of God's joy flowing through your life. Expect it because I know certainly it's going to happen tonight. Saturday night is a great night because on Saturday night I prepare to preach on Sunday morning. And if there's any way you can get to Church on the Rock, first thing in the morning, 10 a.m., I'll be preaching in Rockwall, Texas. If you've not yet joined the prayer army, I need you to do that tonight. We've almost got 200,000 now. And all of you, please hear me and hear me with your heart. God spoke to me and said people were going to begin to sow large sacrificial gifts into this ministry. Just recently, a businessman from the West Coast sent me a check for $5,000. And his little note just said, Larry, I believe in you. Well, I'm saying I'm glad you believe in me. But beyond that, believe in the cause that God called me to do. And that is to raise up prayers that will pray a change in our society. Please, for Christ's sake and for your own good, sow a generous gift on this Saturday night. You'll feel good about it. You'll be glad that you did. God bless you as I preach the Word of God. Don't lose your joy. And then I'll come back and break that spirit of depression off your life. Get ready for a great baptism of joy in Jesus' name. Everybody in the army of God today needs a fresh baptism of joy. And I'm calling the church on the rock here in Rockwall, and I'm calling the entire prayer army. This is going to be a theme that you're going to hear me say over and over and over for the next few weeks and maybe for a long time. I'm calling us to a fresh baptism of joy. Now, I'm not talking about just giddy feelings or just charismatic goosebumps. I'm talking, to, I'm talking today about an abiding reality of joy. You know, recently uh, it was written in a periodical that 10 million Americans suffer from chronic depression. It is the third most debilitating disease in America. That means it costs the most, both in dollars and cents, people off work, people losing uh, time in their life, getting behind because they're down. Well, I want to talk to you today about why it is so important that you don't lose your joy. Joy produces strength. When you lose joy, you lose strength. They did a medical uh, research just recently and found out people who are rejoicing actually produce a chemical 
in the brain called endorphins. The endorphins actually send uh, chemical waves throughout the entire body producing health and life. That's why the scripture teaches that a merry heart does good like medicine. It actually says in the Hebrew language, I looked it up this morning, it says a merry heart is good medicine. The actual rendering of that verse says when there is joy in your life, that produces medicine that runs all through your body. That's why it says in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8 and verse 10, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now watch this equation. Joy produces strength. Strength produces the ability to fight. How many of you know we're in a fight? How many know there's a war going on? There's a literal war raging right now for your life. There's a literal war raging for the life and the future of this church. There's a war raging for the future of our nation right now. There's a war going on right now in the heavenly sphere that if we don't win this victory, we'll have to apologize to our grandchildren. Mark that down. If we don't win right now, if we as a church, if we do not win as a church, if you do not win as an individual, we're going to have to explain it to the next generation what happened to this nation because the very soul of our nation is hanging in the balance reference what we do as a praying army. He said, if my people call by my name will humble themselves, pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. We've got a chance right now to see a healing in our land. This is the only chance, as far as I know, that I will ever have in my life to do what we're doing right now. It will not come back around. It will not come back around. Your day, your opportunity is right in front of you. And some of you say, but pastor, I've already lost so many opportunities. Well, I've got an announcement to make, and I pray everybody hears it again. It's a new day. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to my voice. It's a new day. And I've got news for everybody here. Weeping may endure for a night. But I know when joy comes. Joy comes in the morning. And folks, it's morning. It's morning. This is the, the dawning of a brand new day in the life of this church and in the life of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And at this hour, at this day, God told me to stand up and call us to a fresh commitment to the joy of our God, to remove everything out of our lives that has to be removed so that the joy of God can flow freely through our lives. You say, well, what do I do? Here's what I want you to do. Number one, I'm going to ask you today to begin to declare out loud, it's God's will for me to have great joy. How many of you believe today that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's what? Righteousness, peace, and what? Joy in the Holy Spirit. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. You see, when you are really flowing in the kingdom of God, no matter what goes on around you, it is God's will for you to keep your joy. Now, I'm going to say this again so that those of you who think that what Church on the Rock or this movement is all about is just an emotional thing, hear me when I say it. God wants our emotions to be healthy and happy, but that's not just so that we have emotional happiness. The joy of God is our strength, and without strength, we can't fight. If we can't fight, we won't win, but turn that around. If we have joy... We're going to have what? How many of you need more strength? No, no, no. You need more joy. Because once you get more joy, you're going to have more strength. Once the strength is restored, guess what happens? That's when you have the ability, when anything comes at you, just say, well, well, let's just laugh at that a while. Let's just rejoice about that a while. Because there's nothing impossible with your God. So first of all, I want you to establish in your mind that it's God's will for you to be full of joy. Turn over to 1 Peter real quick, if you would, please. Turn over to the book of 1 Peter. 
quickly now. First Peter chapter 1 makes an incredible statement. Anytime the Bible talks about joy in the New Testament, generally, also, there's a mentioning of suffering or problems. God wants to show off His ability to produce joy in the midst of crisis, to give you a smile. You know, a lot of people disagree with a lot of President uh, Reagan's policies. They didn't like what he did with this and that. But boy, one thing you have to love about Reagan, when he would stand out, when President Reagan would stand up in front of the press, he'd walk out and he'd do this. Well, and he'd smile right in the face of the of all kinds of struggles. You know what that was? That was smart. That's what that was. First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one. In this salvation you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you are grieved or you're in heaviness through various trials. Now get a hold of this. That the genuineness of your faith, everybody say genuineness. That's a mouthful in it that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it's tested by fire. Everybody say fire. Anybody ever gone through the fire? Let's see. I've often said when you come to the place you can sing in the fire, he'll take you out of that fire. And then he'll let you go through another fire. That the genuineness of your faith is much more precious than gold that perishes, though it's tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ whom having not seen you love, now watch this, though now you do not see him physically, yet believing, everybody say believing. Now say it one more time. One more time. Okay, believing, you rejoice with what? Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Now I want you to just pause there for just a moment. I'm going to give you the second thing I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to believe. Now hear me, hear me, hear me. Believe that Jesus has already overcome every problem in your life. How many of you believe that Jesus has already overcome the world? You know, it says in John's Gospel, now just, if you, if you would, just mark that in your mind, believing, when you believe, you can rejoice. Let's say that together. When I believe, say it. Then I can what? then I can rejoice. And it doesn't say just a squirt. It doesn't say just a squirt. It says joy what? Unspeakable, inexpressible, unutterable, exploding joy. Ooh! Wish I could just infuse it into... Oh. What I'd like to do is get a hold of every one of you and just... and just... Put it in you. But guess what? If, if I did that to you, you'd have to have me every day. I want to get you to the place, even though you're going through trials, even though it's hot and it's fiery and it's hard, there's inexpressible joy. You say to me, you say, well, now, Larry, how in the world can that be real? It can only be real if you believe that he's already overcome every problem that you're facing. John chapter 16, turn over there if you would, please. Ooh, this is good now. Hang on. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is good, but I think it's getting ready to get better. Tell them, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Oh. John chapter 16 and verse 33. These things have I spoken to you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Say it out loud, in the world. I will have trouble. How many of you know that's true? How many know that's true? How many know bad things happen to good people sometimes? How many know you have trouble sometimes with your flesh? Anybody here still have trouble sometimes with your flesh? The rest of y'all are liars that aren't agreeing with me right now. As long as you live in your body, this flesh body, dirt responds to dirt. This dirt is going to respond to the dirt all around. You're going to war all your life with your flesh. You say, that's not good news. No, but the rest of the verse is good. It said, in the world, you're going to have trouble. How many of you sometimes have trouble with people? How I many sometimes have trouble with real personal relationships? You don't know what to do. You're confused about it. Listen, every problem you can imagine, the sense of failure, the always worry, living in a world of worry, all of the things that press you down and depress you 
dealing with what's real. Is this true or is this false? Always struggling on the inside. All of those things are what make up this world. Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. But then he gave this word. But cheer up. You see the rest of the verse? Look at John 16, 33. Jesus has already overcome the world. Now, that's something you can be positive about. I want you to think about your biggest difficulty right now. What causes your joy to be stolen from you more than anything else? I don't care what it is, whether it be worry, a lack of self-esteem, questions about your own uh, relationship with God. Listen, Jesus has already solved every one of them. It's already done. He's already paid the price for it. He's already died to win this victory for us. Now, that's why we rejoice. You say, well, Pastor, what good does that do? Start believing it and watch what happens. He said, when you believe, you can begin to rejoice. He said, well, I've still got it. I've still got the problem. Okay, that's number three. Now, watch this. I want you to turn your sorrow into joy. How many of you want to see the Lord really get involved in your problem? Here's what has to happen. You've got to take the sorrow and bring it to him and say, God, you see it as it is, and I am rejoicing in you to take this thing and turn it into joy. How many of you believe today that the worst situations in your life, Jesus can turn that into joy? What do you have to do with it? You've got to come and say to him, God, I take this, even this sin, and I lay it down at your feet, and I believe you've overcome this sin. How many believe Jesus has already overcome every sin in your life? And say, God, I'm asking you now to take this and cause me to become the kind of person you want me to be. Doesn't mean that sin itself produces joy, but God will take the sin, he'll give you a holy hatred for the sin, and he'll cause you to have a deeper devotion to him than you've ever had before. I believe it's time that we take the negative things that the enemy is always trying to press down upon us and make those things serve the living God. We got to begin, instead of us serving them, make them serve him. Are you hearing that? Take the depression, whatever it is, for whatever reason, take the down thing and bring it to Jesus and say, God, I am giving this thing to you, believing. Everybody say it one more time. Believe that through the blood of Christ, through the blood of Christ, he has already taken that in himself. And he says, you give it to me, and I'll take your sorrow, and I'll turn it into joy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's the third thing. Take your sorrow to Jesus. Let him turn it into joy. And then the last thing I want to say, hear me now, and then we're going to, we're going to pray. I want to see every one of you let the joy flow out of your life. Most of you have a mechanism on the inside of you that when you decide to come to the Lord and confess it's your will for me to be full of joy because you have already overcome the world, I'm taking my sorrows and I'm going to let you turn my sorrows into joy. You have a mechanism inside of you when the joy starts to flow, you quench it, you stop it. It's a psychological mechanism that says on the inside of you, now don't get too joyful. Don't, get, don't let that joy river flow because if you do, I think most of you think, well, you might be disappointed. It might not last. It might not be real. Or some of you may think, well, if I really get full of the joy of the Lord, I may uh, become a spectacle of myself. I may make a spectacle of myself. My wife, this lady right here, walks down a mall and people literally stare at her, not just because she's pretty, but because she radiates the joy of the Lord. Melba Joe was saying the other day, people all the time look at her and say, what's going on? With, yeah, why are, you, why are you so happy? What's your problem? And most of us have a mechanism on the inside of us when that joy starts coming out, we stop it. We say, oh, now, oh, oh, wait, wait. You need to be a little bit more conservative than that because people are going to think you're really saved. Or people are going to think, or, or I really think sometimes we damn it up or we stop it out of a fear mechanism that it's not going to last. 
And so we try to kind of conserve a little bit of it. I don't know why you do it. But I want to give you a word today. Stop it! And allow, listen, because the Lord told me, He said, if you'll do these things, He just said, if you just believe, it's my will. If you'll come to Him and you'll say, God, I'm giving you my sorrow. I'm going to let you turn them into joy because I really believe you've already overcome the world. There's going to come, now listen, 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 listen. There's going to come a joy explosion on this church. It is the will of God for you not to sit there and look like you've gotten baptized in pickle juice. Hear me, it is the will of God that every choir member come out with radiance on their face. It's the will of God when we walk out of here today that people stop us all over Dallas and say, what have you got? They're going to ask some of you if you're on speed. Because people can't believe in the world that we're living with all of the stress, with all of the pressure, with all of the fear of disease, with all of the fear of war that's all about us, that people could be walking around full of joy in the Holy Spirit. They don't understand it. The one unmistakable earmark of a truly Spirit-filled Christian is they're full of the joy of God. Whew. And I want to see a church filled with the joy of God, not just for the sense that we can get together and enjoy it together, although we will. But more so, so that when we go out into this world that is living on valiums, or they're living on antidepressant medicine, that we can show forth a radiant, beautiful, powerful joy that will be an attraction to a world that is massively depressed. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear me? Let's pray together right now and let's agree together that we're not going to be depressed. You know, I've got some partners right now in my life, prayer partners, and I'm in agreement with them that I'm not going to be depressed. Now, an agreement is different than just saying a prayer. Saying a prayer, two people saying a prayer, is not necessarily a prayer of agreement. A prayer of agreement is when you say, I'm agreeing and I'm not coming out of the agreement. Now, when you get to that place and you know you're praying according to the will of God, you're going to have what you're asking for. And I know it's God's will for you to be full of joy, so I'm going to pray for you right now. Will you agree with me? Father, on this Saturday night, I rebuke depression right now off everybody that's listening. That spirit of heaviness I break off your life. And I declare tonight in Jesus' name the release of joy unspeakable and full of glory. The joy of God is released right now in your heart. And so I want you just to open up your mouth and just begin to praise God out loud. Right where you are, you may be in a room full of people. Go ahead and just begin to rejoice. Because I declare to you there's victory in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. This Saturday night, over every spirit of depression, in Jesus' name, Amen and amen and amen. Now tonight, I'm ministering with...